Hey guys, it's Bree. So in today's video, I am finally, finally having time to do my May wrap up and my June TBR. I would like to go on and say that I normally do not have a set TBR for each month. I pretty much just read whatever is on my shelf, what looks good at the moment, and stuff like that. So this month I decided to do it only because I have a, a stack of books I'm trying to get through before I get to the other books I had because I've had this book the longest so I need to get through them as much as I can. So I'm looking forward to that. So for my May wrap up itself, I only did two books this month and they are pretty short. Um, I have been so busy with work and everything like that that I haven't had time to read. The only reason I really finished these books is because I did it on audiobook. So I was able to do other things and read these books at the same time. And they're quite short as well. So uh, let's get started with these two. Um, the first one I have is Soul of the Deep by Natasha Bowen. This is the sequel to Skin of the Sea. And I would like to say I really did enjoy this duology. I think it is just a duology itself. It is mainly about Simi who is a mamiwata who is basically like a mermaid who collects the souls of those who have died at sea into the afterlife. She is a part of a group created by a god, um, an ancestor uh, to help those into the afterlife to help protect those um, dead at sea and stuff like that. She ends up in the first book saving one of the humans who are at sea, which is somewhat, is basically forbidden. Um, and then she goes on a whole quest to help him defeat some god who has wronged them and stuff like that. This, this duology in general, I enjoyed the first book really, really much, really, really good. And I enjoyed this one. My only gripe about this one is because, like I said, I believe it is just duology. There were some questions at the end of this book that had me wanting more. And I wanted more answers. Because um, there were some stuff left out in this book. I will say this book was really, really good. I, will, um, I think the first one, though, is my favorite out of them. But it, this one was really, really good in general. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't really write books at all either. I've mentioned this before because I just enjoy books. I don't really rate them. It's very rare when I don't like a book, so really, really enjoyed that. And the next one I have is Wander. So if you grew up in, if you were in the elementary school around 2012, you know this book was popular then. This was the one book in my library at my elementary school that was always checked out. Because I don't know if your library was like this. Most li my libraries, some of books had, we had like a couple copies of some books. Some books we only had one copy. This was one that we only had like one copy of, which I don't know why they did that. I think it was one of the dumbest things they could have done at that elementary school because so many people liked it. There was literally a waiting list for this book. And I wanted to read it for years. I just never got the chance to because it's funny. Because when I was younger, this book looked big. But it's actually not that big it's so small and i was able to read it pretty fast as well um but i believe if you if you are in the state of texas you understand i believe this was a blue bonnet book so sometimes i know in other states it's called something else we have a top tier like award for certain books in our state they're called blue bonnet books i believe this is one of the blue bonnet books because they i'm not gonna lie they used to show us videos of these books um every year whenever the ranking was announced and stuff like that so this book if you don't know what it's about it is about augie who was born not like anybody else he had to go through many surgeries to help his face and stuff like that so he's basically i don't want to say deformed but he's not like other children he has some complications with stuff with his health growing up and stuff like that and he is entering his first year of school in the fifth grade this follows him and other point of views as well um going through his experience in school making friends dealing with bullies and stuff like that i absolutely adored this book i thought it was really really good I, i'm not gonna lie i've watched the movie before i don't remember it though because i wasn't really paying attention but i really really loved this book and i actually really recommend it even if you don't 
read middle grade that much i feel like it's an easy fast read it is really really cute so next is gonna be my june tbr i have about five books on this tbr i am hoping to get through all of them at least most of them this month they are a little bit more lengthy compared to the other books i've been reading um for the past few months so i'm hoping to get through them so the first book i have is this cursed crown by um alexandra a. overy and i am i'm upset now because my bookmark just fell out of this book good thing i somewhat remember where i was this is the sequel to these feather flames which i will explain the first book because i don't want to spoil the second book these feather flames follow twins i always forget how to say their names Isaveta, let's say Isaveta and Azaya, Az, Aza, Azia, Azia and Isaveta, who are twins, and basically in this world, the uh, twins themselves have their destinies whenever they are born. One is to become queen. One is to become the firebird. The firebird is basically the person who keeps balance in this land because this land magic is forbidden it is against um laws and stuff like that so the firebird is basically the executioner for these laws it's not so much as them killing those who have done magic it is taking a um, a price for doing magic and stuff like that so the firebird has the calling and stuff like that to um, make things balance um i Asya returns to the palace after being away from her sister for years for training and stuff because her mother has been killed by magic. She is now with this power who sh which she yet has to really understand must find whoever did this magic and killed her mother while her sister is becoming queen. There's so much conspiracies kind of around the crown and trying to um have the downfall of Isabetta and stuff like that. This book in general was one of, actually one of my favorites I read last, was it last year I believe? I think it was last year and I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was really really good and I was very excited when this one, the, se uh, the sequel came out. So I'm very excited to read this one. Like I said, this one's a little bit more lengthy. It's about 500 pages which I um, haven't been reading many big books, but like I said, I'm hoping to get into this one pretty quickly so I can start my reading journey back up again. The next book I have on my TBR is Monsters Born and Made by Tan V. Burha? Burha? Um, this book itself, I guess I'll just read you some, the synopsis for it because I really don't know what this book is about. It says, you swim with monsters, these people cannot scare you. 16-year-old Coral and her brother Emmerich risk their lives to capture the most mm, the monstrous masterings that live in the Black Sea around their island. They have to, or else their family will starve. In an oceanic world swarming with vicious beasts, the ruling elites have in indentured her family to provide the mass the Marstags for the glorious race, a deadly chariot tournament reserved for the upper class. The winning contenders receive a gold, receive gold and glory. The others, if they're lucky, survive. When the, they fail to capture a Marstag, a Marstag, for this year's race, her family cannot afford medicine for Coral's um, chronically ill little sister. Coral decides her only choice is to do what no one is in the world has ever dared cheat her way into the glory race but coral must race against contenders who have trained their whole lives and have no intent of letting a low caste girl steal their glory and when riot breaks out coral has to do more than than win the race she has to stop the whole island from burning it is inspired by a south asian fantasy as well which is really really cool this edition itself is actually a bookish box edition so it has sprayed edges and stuff like that but i'm very very intrigued to read this i feel like it is going to be a really good and interesting read i've never really read something quite like this so i'm very very excited for it 
The next book I have is Almost There, A Twisted Tale by Farah Rosh Roshan. Roshan, which I think is how you say it, is what if Sienna made a deal that changed everything. The Twisted Tale books by Disney are one of my favorite to read. It's one of my favorite series to read. I just love them because I'm a big Disney girl. I'm a big like Disney princess girl. I always loved them. So this is going to be, I believe, the fifth book I have read. So I'm very, very excited. And Tiana is one of my favorite um, Disney princesses. So yeah. It says, what if Tiana made a deal that changed everything? Sometimes life in the Big Easy is tough. No one knows that better than Tiana though she believes that hard work goes a long way. But when the notorious Dr. Fertilier backs her into a corner, she has no choice but to accept an offer that will alter the course of her life in an instant. Soon Tiana finds herself in, in a new reality where all her deepest desires and realizations, and she finally she gets her restaurant, her friends, and are safe and sound. And most mischievous of all, her beloved father is still alive. She got everything she ever wanted. But after a while, her hometown grows mm, Creasy air with new threats cropping cropping up in unlike places. Navigating this strange new New Orleans. Tiana must work alongside Naveen and Charlotte to set things right or risk losing everything she holds dear. That sounds so good to me. Like I said, it's one of my favorite. And Dr. Vasilier is one of my favorite villains. I will say the big old gripe about this movie sometimes is okay. I love this movie though. I love the story so i'm very very excited for that the next book itself is kingdom of the feared by carrie mascackle the, the conclusion to the kingdom of the wicked trilogy i absolutely loved kingdom of the wicked kingdom of the curse was all right the kingdom of the wicked in my opinion was better in general people are saying this is better than those two that it wraps up nicely as well so i'm hoping that's true because like i said i really really like this series um, to not spoil, of course, this one, the first book is about Amelia and her twin, what's her twin name? Vittoria. I forgot her name. Toria, who are witches in Italy. And basically, Vit Amelia finds her sister being killed, or find, I don't remember if she finds her being killed or dead. I just don't, I really don't remember. So she must work with the demon Wrath to help find her killer and all this mysterious thing happening basically in hell so this follows the princess of hell and stuff like that like i said i enjoyed the first two kingdom of the wicked though is by far superior compared to kingdom of the curse kingdom of the curse was all right but i'm hoping this is better so very very excited for that and the last book I have on my TBR is She's Gone by David Bell. This one itself is a thriller. I am actually not a thriller person. I really don't like thrillers. They really don't interest me. But this one actually was a Christmas gift for my dad. So I'm willing to give it a shot because I love my dad so much to read this. And it was so sweet of him to get it for me um, and see how I like it. But this one does seem interesting. How can you survive lies when you can't remember the truth? When 17-year-old Hunter Griff Griffer wakes up in the hospital on the night of homecoming, he's shocked to learn his he and his girlfriend Chloe Summers have been in a terrible car accident. Hunter has no memory of the crash and he and his shock turns to horror when he is told Chloe's blood has been found in the car but she has disappeared. Back at school, his fellow students taunt him, and his former best friend starts making a true crime documentary about the case, one that points the finger directly at Hunter. And just when things can't get any worse, Chloe's mother stands in front of the entire town in candlelight visual and accuses Hunter of murder. Under morning, mounting pressure from the police, Hunter takes matters into his own hands by questioning anyone who might know the truth about and posting videos to prove his innocence. When Hunter learns he and Chloe were seen arguing loudly outside the dance, his face a sickening possibility. Was his anger enough to kill the person he loved? This one actually is very, very interesting. Like I said, I'm not a thriller person. I really don't like thrillers. They're not like my favorite genre i've had a, i like i've read a couple but they're not like my favorite thing in the world i only really like it when like a crime scene investigation that's like my thing 
I love that better. So I'm hoping to enjoy this. My brother actually says that he kind of wants to know how it goes too. So very excited for that. And that is all that I have for my TBR and my wrap up this month, guys. Let me know basically what is on y'all's TBR. What are we looking forward to? What releases are we looking forward to this month? I've been trying to keep up with releases as much as I can. But I haven't really done any of that. I will say Lore Olympus Volume 4, I believe, comes out this month. I believe so. Very excited for that. And then there are so many other TBR videos I'm hoping to make in the future. Like I said, I'm trying to make a TBR of all the books I have at the moment. And I've actually been really good in my book buying band as well. So I'm hoping that will continue. So... I need to get going guys because I need to start cleaning my room and stuff like that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, continue on reading and hope you guys enjoy this video. Bye guys.